Hello, my amazing artists. Today we are going to explore the skills of sewing through making a stuffy donut. The materials that you will have to create this work of art are some different varieties of felt, a metal needle and different colors of thread, as well as some stuffing to make it 3D and plush. So the first thing that you're going to need to do is I take my needle and thread and put it somewhere safe where you won't lose it. Needles are really easy to lose. Then taking your scissors, you're going to want to cut both of the donut top and bottom. What you can do is you can either cut them individually or I like to save time by lining them both up and cutting them together. That way I can ensure that they are the exact same size, even though they were made with a template. For the center, in order to cut, fold your felt in half and snip out the center. Then it's easier to get your scissors into the inside to cut around in the circle. Taking the pieces that you have cut, I would like for you to put the side that has any black and black on the outside, on the bottom, and then take your frosting piece and put it on top of one of the pieces here. Now to glue down all of your frosting and sprinkles, you are able to use whatever type of glue you have. I have here at school um, fabric glue, but it's, it would be just as much to use white glue like we have at home probably. So go ahead and I lift up wherever I'm going to glue so that I know where I'm going to have it. With your sprinkles, I have given you some different colors to use. Just take and snip and snip, and you've got some sprinkles. Same thing, cut as many as you'd like, any size that you'd like, and go ahead and glue them around your donut. Okay, boys and girls, right now I would love for you to set this aside for about an hour or more to dry before we move on to the next step. So hopefully you have let your sprinkles and frosting dry properly onto your donut. And the next thing that I'd like you to do is take your other donut piece, the bottom of it, and you are going to put it on top of the frosting with any of the lines showing up. We don't want to hide those on the inside because actually, boys and girls, eventually we are going to flip it inside out and we want to put the good sides together next to each other. So the good sides are sandwiched in the center. Next, you will have gotten a needle and hopefully it has thread already on it, 
but if it doesn't, let's review how to put thread onto a needle because it can be kind of tricky. So with the end of the thread, there's two tricks. The first one is you want to make sure and hold the thread at the very tip of your fingers. If you hold it down here and try and thread it like this, it's too limp to try and get in the eye of the needle, which is the hole right here in the center of the top of your needle. So hold it really close to your fingertips. But boys and girls, do you see how this thread has multiple small little strings on the inside of it? When we're threading a needle, it can be really frustrating to try and get all these little threads inside. So what we need to do is group them all together. Something I like to do is lick my finger a little bit to get it a little moist and smooth them all together so that they are nice and grouped tight. Look how close they are to my fingertips. That's the best way to make sure that they all get on the inside of the eye of the needle. Next, I look straight down into the eye of my needle and wiggle those strings in and pull them out on the other end. We want to make sure that all of those many different strings make it on this side of the needle and not this side. Next, boys and girls, we are not gonna be tying any knots at the end of our string because we are going to have our string look like this. It's got a really long, long end. And my needle here has just about a hand's length of string here next to the needle. This will be enough to secure it while we're working so that it doesn't come off of our needle. But the most, the best way to hold it is between the two fingers, your pointer finger and thumb, and then to use your pinky and ring finger to secure these strings down here as you're working. Let's get started. For our thread today, we are going to poke your needle up at the edge of the donut first. Then pull until you have a little less than a hand's length. Go ahead and put the needle down. Because we are then going to take the short string that is hanging out of our, our donut and tie a knot by laying the short string over top of this long string. Let me move it over so you can see exactly where that is. So my needle is sitting here. I'm not even touching my needle, doesn't matter. I take my short string, lay it on top of my long string, and this creates a little loop. Tuck the short string under and into the center of the loop. Then grab the long string and pull tight. Let's do that one more time to make a secure double knot. Lay the short string over top of the long string. This is the long string. It's hanging out over here. We're not worrying about it at all. This is the easiest way to do it is laying it on a table. Tuck the end of the short string into the center of the circle. Grab it. Pull the other side and pull for a double knot. Then you can take and snip off some extra of that string. Now we're ready to get on a roll with our stitching. We are going to be doing what's called a whip stitch, boys and girls, which means we are always going to enter from the bottom of our fabric and come up the top, down to the bottom, up on the top, bottom to top, bottom to top. The reason it's called a whip stitch is because it is going whoops, around to the back. It's always coming back around. Something I do to help myself to know exactly where to put my needle is because this is going to be the hidden inside of the donut, the part where you can't see, I can take a marker and I can lay out and plan exactly where I need my needle to go to make sure that I have an even and consistent pattern the whole way around the edge of my donut. Because I wouldn't want one string to be over here and then the next one here and then here and here and here and here. 
that would not be very secure. And the fluff from the inside of the pillow might come out if I have big gaps in my stitching. So when I'm stitching, to ensure where I'm gonna put my needle, I hold the fabric with my left hand and I put my needle directly next to where my thumb is located. My left hand is doing some hard work too, not just my right hand. It is guiding where that string is going so that I can make sure to put my needle up through where that black dot is that I planned for myself. So we're not poking our fingers, but we're definitely using those fingers to guide the thread. So boys and girls, I am going to continue threading around the entire outside of my donut until I run out of thread on my needle. So I've gotten this far on my donut, but I am almost out of string. There's no way that I'm gonna be able to finish this much of the donut with this much string. So what I need to do is use another string to finish, but first I can't just leave this hanging here because it might come unraveled. So what I'm going to do next is take my needle and I'm going to wiggle it underneath that last stitch I made and that will create a loop. I'm not gonna pull it all the way through. I'm gonna pull a little bit of the extra string though, I think, to make my loop bigger. So I've got this loop and the needle and thread is still on my, the thread is still on my needle. I can take my needle and now put it through that loop, grab onto the needle and pull. And this will create a knot, but we want to make a double knot. So let's put it back underneath the thread one more time through and see how it makes that loop take your needle and put it through the loop see how my string is headed in this direction I can put it through that loop grab onto my needle make sure my string is tight and pull it to close the knot Then I can take the thread off my needle and snip off this part and I'm ready for my other string. I'm only going to use the string for this much and then I'll be able to use the extra for the inside of the donut hole. Let's review one more time how to thread our needle. Move that string all the way up to the tips. Moisten the tip of the thread to make sure that all those little bits go together. Look straight down into the eye of the needle and wiggle all those threads into the eye to pull to the other side. We need to start this thread the same way that we did with our first one. We need to put it through and then tie a double knot. Both sides of our string need to be secure. So take the short end Leave your long end with your needle. No need to touch. Put the short end over the long end, tuck it into the circle, and pull. Again, short end over the long end, tuck it in, and pull. Then complete your stitching complete your line of stitching, we need to finish it the same way that we would have the other line. Go ahead over to one of the other stitches, go underneath to pull until you have a loop, put the needle through the loop, and tug tight. Do it one more time for a secure double knot. Make a loop, through the loop, and tug tight. Now boys and girls I've got lots of string left over and that's perfect because I need to still stitch the inside but before we do that we get to do the fun part which is we are going to flip our donut inside out because we have been stitching on the inside and that is 
because we want those stitches to hide. Now this part is going to be a little tricky because some of your pieces that you've glued down may come off and that is okay. Look, a few of mine did too. I can always go back and glue those on one more time. But right now, I want you to take your fingers and on the inside of your donut, massage all those seams until all of the felt is nice and smooth and opened up. We don't want a lumpy donut. Get all those parts opened. I lost three sprinkles. Hopefully you can do better than that so that you don't have to do more gluing later. Okay, now we get to stuff our donut. But before we do that, we are first going to start our stitching. I would like you to line up your center and go ahead and we're just gonna start it with that knot. You're gonna have to put this string through the back side to do your knot. And let's just do like two or three stitches. just to get yourself started. Go ahead and put your needle in a safe place while you go ahead and do the next step. You are gonna take the stuffing that I've given you and I want you to take some of it and just kind of massage it open until it's a little bit more loose. If it's too clumped up, you're gonna have a lumpy pillow. Then take it and stuff it inside and towards the edge. You don't want your pillow to be too overstuffed though, otherwise it will be very hard to sew the center of your donut closed. You definitely will not use all the stuffing that I've given you. Now that you have added all your stuffing, it is now time to finish closing up that center seam. And this may be a little bit tough because, boys and girls, you're gonna need to go ahead and work from both sides. For this stitch, sometimes I like to do more of a running stitch where I go from both the top and the bottom. See how when I come from the top, I next choose a place next to that stitch to go back down through. 